Most second-hand cars are worth a lot less now than they were brand new. Obviously, it's called depreciation, and it's a sad fact of owning a car. But there are a few cars out there that are worth a lot more now than when they left the factory. And these aren't all expensive supercars and rare classics either. Some of them are pretty ordinary. They're the sort of car your dad had, but he sold years ago because he didn't know how valuable it turned out to be. So here's my pick of the best cars that you wish you'd never sold. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. The Citroen 2CV is an old car, like really, really old. It was built in the 1940s to be the perfect car for French farmers. So it was simple to build, easy to fix, and it was dead cheap. Back in the day, you could buy a brand new one for about £350. This meant they ended up being really, really popular. Citroen actually built 3.8 million of the things, and you could still buy a brand new one in 1990. So if you needed a cheap car and you only had a few hundred quid to spend, you bought a second-hand 2CV. Simple as that. It's all changed now, though. Loads of them ended up getting scrapped, so there aren't actually many left. And the ones that are could be worth big money. You'll need about £5,000 to get a 2CV in good condition these days, but if you want a really, really early 1950s car in perfect condition, it could cost you £20,000. That's bonkers, especially for a car people used to nickname the Tin Snail or Le Tin Escargot. Let's go around. Loads of BMW fanboys will tell you that the best M car ever made is the E46 M3 CSL from 2004. I'm one of those fanboys, by the way. It has an absolutely epic 3.2 litre straight six naturally aspirated engine with 360 horsepower. And it's 100 kilos lighter than the regular E46 M3. I've driven one and it's absolutely awesome. It's just a shame about that rubbish automatic gearbox. I guess you can't always have everything, can you? Anyway, all these upgrades didn't come cheap. The CSL cost more than £50,000 when it was new, which was around 20 grand more than the standard M3. 15 years later, you can pick up a standard E46 M3 for between 10 and 15,000 pounds. But if you want a good CSL, it's gonna set you back at least 60,000 pounds. And the prices of them are still going up. That means this old M3 costs more than a brand new BMW M2 competition. Speaking of which, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch me drag race an E36 M3 against an E46 M3 and a brand new M2 competition to see which of them is best. In a straight line, anyway. You can't buy Lancers in the UK anymore, but they used to make the coolest rally cars ever, especially the Delta Integrale. These Deltas would race in the World Rally Championship in the 1980s and the 1990s against Subaru Legacies and Toyota Celicas, and they'd win. The most extreme version was the Delta Integrale Evo 2 from 1993. It had four-wheel drive, massive flared arches, and a turbocharged two-litre engine with 215 horsepower was a lot back then, but Lancia had a problem. They had a reputation for rusting really, really badly. So it didn't matter how many rallies the car won because not many people wanted to fork out £25,000 for a car that might dissolve in the rain. But if you're one of the brave people who bought one back in the day, you could be onto a winner because Evo 2 models in good condition can be worth more than £50,000 today. That's more than five times the price I'll have to pay for a Toyota Celica GT4 from the 90s. Just make sure that you've got a garage to park your Lancia in, otherwise obviously it'll just rot to pieces. You need to be a bit of a petrol head to appreciate most of the cars on this list, but not my next choice. It's the VW Campervan. These came out in the 1950s and became massively popular in the 60s when everyone had long hair, wore like tie dye, and listened to Jimi Hendrix, man. Hey, cool. You could buy one brand new for less than £3,000, but they got seriously cheap in the 80s and the 90s. You could actually pick up a second hand camper van back then for around £500, so long as you didn't mind finding some hippie paraphernalia in the cubby holes. Trouble is, if you've only spent a few hundred quid on a car, you're not going to spend a lot of money maintaining it afterwards, are you? So loads of these camper vans ended up rusting away or being sold off for scrap. This means that the ones that are left are worth more than ever before. Even a fairly standard example is going to set you back around 10 grand today. Meanwhile, low mileage versions that are pristine and kitted out with interiors could end up costing between 40 and £50,000 today. In fact, one sold at auction in the US for more than £180,000. Forget a camper van, you could buy a whole holiday home for that. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my in-depth video review of the brand new VW Grand California camper van. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Watch that video to see why.
These days, most fast forwards are hot hatches, like the Fiesta and Focus ST. But back in the 80s, Ford was making its own version of the BMW M3. It was called the Sierra Cosworth, and it was basically a touring car for the road. It had tuned suspension, a massive rear spoiler, and a two litre turbocharged engine with 204 horsepower. These cost a smidge under £23,000 back in 1987, but they didn't hold their value anywhere near as well as an old M3. The going price for second hand Sierra Cosworths dropped to below £10,000 in 2010, but the values have been going up ever since. If you want a decent Cosy now, you're going to have to pay around £30,000, and really nice ones are going for more than £50,000. That's more than a brand new Ford Mustang, and not the four-cylinder one either, the proper 5-litre V8. The Peugeot 205 GTI was one of the first hot hatches ever. It came out in the 80s at the same time as the Golf GTI Mark II, and it was absolutely brilliant. Okay. So it only had 115 horsepower from its 1.6 litre engine, which sounds like a pitiful amount these days, but it loved to rev and the whole car weighed less than 900 kilos. So it handled like a big French go-kart. It was cheap too. You could pick one up for around £6,000 in 1984. To give you an idea how much that was, a Porsche 911 cost almost £24,000 back then. And these dinky GTIs got cheaper and cheaper as the years went on. You could buy one for about £1,000 in 2010, but they're much more expensive now. You're going to have to spend around £5,000 for a decent 205 GTI. And some really nice examples with a later, more powerful 1.9 engine are going for £20,000. But even that's nothing. Think an absolutely mint low mileage car sold at auction in 2017 for more than £38,000. You could buy some of the very best brand new hot hatches for that, and I'm talking the Honda Civic Type R, the Mini GP, the Hyundai i30 Ed, and of course the Ford Focus ST, all of which are a lot faster than the humble 205 GTI. Now, if you click on the pop out banner up there, you can watch me race those four hot hatches I've just mentioned in a great video. The first Mini was a bit like Britain's Beetle, it was a car. For the people. It was cheap to buy, cheap to run, and surprisingly practical for such a small car. The first Mini went on sale back in 1959, and you could pick one up for just £470, so no wonder they sold millions of them. Literally millions. By the time they stopped making them at the turn of the century, 5.3 million Minis had left the factory. Or should that be factories? Anyway, the Mini is the most popular British car of all time. I remember in the 80s, the 90s and the noughties, there was absolutely loads of them knocking around. Everyone pretty much had one, or at least you knew someone who had one, and you could pick them up for a few hundred quid. Dirt cheap. The thing is, nowadays people must be getting really nostalgic for old Minis, because the prices have shot up. For example, a fairly ratty car from the late 90s will cost you at least £1,000, which I guess isn't too bad, but older Minis are really, really valuable. You're going to have to pay around £10,000 for a Minis from the 70s in good condition, and a mint one from the 50s and 60s could cost more than £20,000. That's more than a brand new Mini could cost you. Next on my list is a Porsche, but it's not a 911. This was actually Porsche's first mass-produced car from all the way back in 1948. Well, I say it was Porsche's first car, but it actually shares quite a few of its bits with the Volkswagen Beetle. But that's okay. After all, Ferdinand Porsche, who founded Porsche, did design the Beetle, so I'll let him off. Anyway, you could buy a Porsche 356 for about £3,000 when it was new, or you could pay £300 more if you fancied a convertible version. And loads of people did. They were really, really popular, actually. But as soon as Porsche launched the 911 in 1963, the old 356 started to feel a bit slow and a bit old fashioned. So a lot of people traded in their 356s to get a brand new 911. But if you kept hold of your 356, you'd be laughing all the way to the bank. Because an early 356 coupe can be worth around £100,000, while a mint convertible can change hands for more than £200,000. Now that is pretty amazing for a car that's based on a Beetle and sort of looks like an upside down bathtub. Click on the pop out banner to watch me drag race the latest Porsche 911 Turbo S against the all new Taycan Turbo S electric car. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Also, let me know of some other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. If you'd like to watch some more videos, just click on the video windows there. And why don't you sign up to the new CarWow newsletter? All you have to do is click on that box there. It's completely free, and then we'll keep you up to date of all the latest new cars and reviews in between these video uploads. Thanks for watching.